In this video, I'm going to share with you how to do a property title search. And I'm also going to share with you some things that you want to keep in mind when you're doing a property title search as well. Coming up. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs. Welcome to another video. Listen, in today's video, I want to share with you a step-by-step -step approach on how to conduct a title search on a piece of real estate. Now, this is a question that came from one of my YouTube subscribers who wanted to know how to conduct a title search on a creative real estate investing deal. Not only does this work with creative real estate investing, it works with auctions, it works with wholesaling, or any other type of real property that you're dealing with in the real estate investing business. You want to make sure that you're always conducting a title search to make sure that the property that you're interested in is free of any liens or encumbrances on the property. Now, before I actually jump into all of the content that I'm going to share with you on this particular video, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already, be sure to click the notification bell if you've never clicked that notification bell so you can be notified when more videos like this are released, be sure to share this video with as many people as possible and also leave a comment on this video, let me know what your thoughts are on this particular topic. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the content. So first and foremost, what is a property title? Well, in layman's terms, a property title is a bundle of rights and a piece of property. We're going to leave it at that because that's exactly what it is. We don't want to overcomplicate this. So when you're purchasing real estate and you're taking title to a property, or rather, before you take title to a property, what you want to do is what's called a title search. So what exactly is a title search? Well, in its simplest form, a title search is the process of retrieving the history of a piece of real estate. This process allows you to establish title history. So you'll establish what's called a chain of title, and it'll also bring light to any liens and encumbrances on that particular property as well. So basically you want to do a title search before purchasing any type of real estate to see if that property has any liens or any other defects on that title. And you also want to do a title search in order to understand what the chain of ownership was from the beginning of that particular property until the current date. Now when it comes to liens, there are two different types of liens that can be recorded on a title. You have what's called a recorded lien and an unrecorded lien. Now, an example of a recorded lien can be a mortgage. An example of an unrecorded lien can be, let's say, a mechanics lien where you had a contract to do some work on a property, but they weren't paid for that particular job. So they decided to slap a lien on the property, a mechanics lien on that property to cloud the title. Those are just some examples of a recorded lien and an unrecorded lien, but there are obviously many others that can go on title as well. Now, if you want to get started on researching a property's title history, there are three different ways that you can go about doing it. The first way is by doing it online. You can go to your county's website and simply pull the information that you need right online. In fact, I'm going to show you an example of how to do that in just a few minutes. Keep watching this video. The next way is to go down to the courthouse yourself. And sometimes you'll be charged a fee in order to be able to do this. But in some cases, you won't. At any rate, you can simply go down to the courthouse, the recorder of deeds office, or you can go to the tax assessor's office to find the information that you need in order to be able to conduct a proper title search. The third way is the way that I personally recommend, and that's by using a professional title company or attorney to do this for you. Now, if you want to do it yourself using one of the first two methods, I would say use that method to do a preliminary title search. Do not allow yourself to purchase a property unless you have a professional with professional eyes looking at that particular title. We'll talk about why that's important as we go on throughout this particular video. Again, keep watching. Now, here's the deal. When it comes to using a professional title company or attorney, you can ask for a preliminary title search from the professional company as well. It'll cost you somewhere between $100 and $150 based on the company that you're using. And the reason you would want to use a preliminary title search is to get some information on a property before 
you actually purchase that property without doing a full-blown title search on that particular property. And by doing that preliminary title search, it can prevent you from purchasing a property that will give you headaches on the other side. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is any property that you purchase, you want to get what's called title insurance on that property. Now, the good thing about getting title insurance or being able to get title insurance is for the simple fact that a title insurance company will not insure a title if there are liens and encumbrances on a particular property. So you know that when you actually purchase this property, whether you're using private money, your own funds, or you're just simply purchasing this property through seller financing or something like that, you know that you're getting a property that's free and clear of any defects on that particular title. And that's exactly why it's important to get a title search done to make sure that you're protecting your long-term investment in that particular property. Now, of course, you can purchase a property that has defects on it, but when you go to sell that property, just understand that you're gonna have to clear those defects before someone can be insured title-wise on that particular property. So just keep that in mind. So those are really the three ways to do a title search on a property. You can do it online, you can do it in person, or you can use a professional to do it. And I totally recommend using a professional, even if you wanted to use them in a preliminary status where you're paying them a little bit of money to be able to go out and do a preliminary title search for you to see what's actually on the property. Now, when you're conducting a title search, there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. The first thing is to establish a clear line of ownership on that particular property. So what you want to do, again, you've heard me mention this before, is to get a chain of title. So you want to know who owned that property from the time the property was built until the current date. And you want to make sure that all of those owners match up on the document. So that's called a clear line of title on the property. The next thing you need to understand is if there are any mortgages on the property. And I'll show you exactly how to find that information as well. After you find out if there's any mortgage information on the property, you want to find out if there are any back taxes or any liens on the property. And that's going to show in the property records as well. And then finally, you want to make sure that you locate any old property surveys and make sure that they conform to the current property's boundaries. So these are just some things that you want to be mindful of as you're doing your own title search. Again, always consult with an attorney or a professional title company before you actually purchase real property to make sure that you're doing it the right way and to make sure that you can be covered through a title insurance company as well. So be mindful of that. So how does all of this work? If you wanted to do your own preliminary research, uh, going back to the step where I told you you can actually do this online yourself, how does this actually work? Well, I'm actually going to pull up my computer right now, my laptop, and I'm actually going to show you exactly how to do it. Let's go ahead and jump onto the laptop right now. All right, so we're here on netronline.com, which is one of my favorite public records website. I teach how to use this particular website in just about all of my courses. I've been using this site for years. But what I'm going to do is share with you some basic information that you can look for when it comes to, let's say, chain of title or to find out if there are any mortgages on a property or any liens or anything like that. And I'm going to use some properties that I either own or previously own as examples. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and click on public records online. And once you click on public records online, you just want to select your state. You can select it down at the bottom here. Uh, I'm just going to go to the map and click on North Carolina. Now, once you click on the state that you live in, uh, the next thing you want to do is select the county where the property would be located. So the first county I'm going to go ahead and find is Guilford. Now, once I click on the county that the property is located in, notice that you can either select the assessor or the register of deeds. Now, generally, I'm going to select the register of deeds, although you can find some information on the assessor's website as well. But we're going to use the register of deeds for the purposes of this particular video. So once I select the register of deeds, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and then you're going to notice that 
uh, there's going to be a link that says search real estate records. I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And then you're going to see there's going to be a legal disclaimer, which is going to be on just about everybody's site. I want you to be mindful as well that most state sites will look relatively the same. They may differ from state to state, but the object is the same as you're looking for this particular information. So you just have to make some small adjustments based on your local area. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this disclaimer. And then once I accept the disclaimer, what I'm going to do is go ahead and search for one of the properties that I've recently owned or that I currently own. Now, one thing I want you to understand about the way we purchase real estate, if we're purchasing a property to hold on to long term, we're going to put that property in a trust. If we're doing a fix and flip, chances are we're going to be using our LLC. And if we're wholesaling properties, we're going to be using our LLC as well. So I'm just going to give you an example of each of these so that you understand what the chain of title looked like. And I'm also going to show you how on one of them, we actually took out a loan on the property. So what I'm going to do first is show you a property where we purchased under a land trust. Now, I recently did a video on the way we structure our LLCs and use land trusts as well. I'll be sure to link that up at the top. But this particular house that we held on to long term was a seller finance deal. So let me go ahead and just type in 4007 Peterson. And you're going to see exactly why I named it that in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on search. Now, if you watch that other video, within that video, I explained that we use the property address and we use trust at the end. So this is evidence of what we typically like to do when we purchase real estate. This is 4007 Peterson Avenue Trust. And this is proof of what we actually like to do in our real estate investing business when we're naming our trusts. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and display the details on this particular property. And you're going to be able to see that we purchased this house from the original owner who owned this property for a very, very long time. Now, this is a property that we sold a couple of years ago, but we purchased it back in 2017 from Nancy Dyson. And then we ended up selling this property to Jose Flores in 2019. So again, the purchase date was 2017. We sold it two years later and we sold it for a good profit as well. And this is how you can verify the chain of title. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this PDF here. And you're going to notice that this document is going to come up. Now, as I've mentioned, this was a purchase money deed of trust, which basically means that the seller held the financing for us on this particular property. So this deed of trust was made the 20th day of October 2017. The grand tour, which is 4007 Peterson Avenue Trust. That was the trust that I personally set up along with the trustee who was the attorney that closed the deal for us. And then we put the owner as the beneficiary of the trust until we actually paid the property off. So this was the way that the owner was protected at that particular time. Now, we purchased this property from Nancy for $25,000. We put $5,000 down. And as you can see, we had a $20,000 promissory note that we paid over time to Nancy with a balloon date, which was about two years later. And you can see we actually closed out two days after this particular date. Now, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice that uh, you have Jamel Gibbs. Obviously, that's yours truly. And you have 4007 Peterson Avenue Trust. And then you have my company as the new trustee on this particular deal. So, we tied this property up. We took it through seller financing from Nancy Dyson. And she basically financed $20,000 on the property to us. And then if we go back out, you notice that we sold this property to Jose Flores. Let me pull up the PDF. We sold this property two years later to Jose Flores. Again, the grand tour at that time was us, Mill Street Properties, trustee of 4007 Peterson Avenue Trust. If you look at that video that I just told you about how we set up LLCs and use trust, you'll see why I set this up this way. And then you have the grantee, 
which is Jose Flores. He purchased this property from us. And you can see the property address is 4007 Peterson Avenue. All right. So you can see that we sold this property a couple of years later to Jose. Uh, so this is how you can verify the chain of title on a property. One document, you have Nancy Dyson selling to the, the trust, and then you have the trust selling to Jose Flores on the new chain. So that's just one way of verifying the title on the particular property. This is just an example of how to do it on a seller finance deal. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is if there were any liens or any defects on the title, that would actually pop up right here as well. But this particular property didn't have any. Now what I wanna do is show you how this would look if you were doing a fix and flip. So I'm gonna pull up one of our old fix and flip properties. Now I'm gonna go back to netronline.com and here in North Carolina, I'm just gonna select, let's say, I wanna show you a county that where we don't do a lot of business in, which is Davidson County. We purchased several properties there, but we're not really, really active there. But I've done recent YouTube videos on properties that we've double closed there. So maybe we can look at a couple of those as well. All right. So once we get to Davidson County, notice that we have the register of deeds again. I'm going to go ahead and click on data online. I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms. And you can see that it's relatively similar to Guilford County, right? So what I'm going to do is just type in Let's say Mill Street. And I'm going to go ahead and click on search. And as you can see, there's a couple of uh, Mill Street properties that actually showed up. In fact, this one has 22 records. So let's go ahead and click on that one and see what that one is all about. And as you can see, there were several records, about 22 records here on Mill Street properties. So these are dating back to 2016. Now, I personally moved to North Carolina back in 2014, but I started buying in Davidson County in 2016. Obviously, I was purchasing properties in North Carolina and different counties before that. But this is when we started tapping into the Davidson County market, which is Thomasville and Lexington and other areas like that. Now, here's an example of a rehab deal that we've done. We purchased this property from William Hinkle Estate, and we actually took out a private money loan on this particular property. And you can see that we're on that deed as well. So if I click on the PDF of this particular property, this was back in 2017, you can see that this was a deed of trust. Uh, you can see that the note holder is listed on the property right here. And if we scroll down, uh, you can get all of the information on what this note was all about. Right. So this is a promissory note or, or a deed of trust that was used to purchase this particular property. Just going back out to Davidson County here. And then you could kind of see a chain right here on what we've actually done, whether we modified the loan a year later, which we actually did. You can see it right here. Uh, we actually removed some people off of the title, uh, some of the partners that we had. But the point is, you can get a clear understanding of what the chain of title was on that particular property or any property that we've actually purchased. Here's a recent one that we literally just did back in uh, May, May 13th, which is a couple of weeks ago. I actually did a YouTube video on this. I'll be sure to link that up at the top as well, so you can be sure to check that out. But this was a property that we purchased. Uh, we actually bought the property and sold the property the same exact day. In fact, we purchased this property from Paul Westmoreland. You can see it right here, 5-13-2021. If I open up the deed, you can see the PDF right here where you have Paul Westmoreland is the grantor. Mill Street Properties LLC is the grantee. And then if I go back out, the same day, we sold this property to this particular buyer. If we open up the PDF, Mill Street Properties is the grand tour, and then we have our buyer right here. So not only can you find the chain of title on these properties, this is also another great way to find private money lenders, to find cash buyers if that's what you're looking to do, but you can use this information to do 
preliminary title searches. This was a wholesale deal where we double closed, we bought the property and sold it in one day. And then you also saw an example of a rehab where we took out a private money loan on that particular property. It was $130,000 that we took out and then we ended up uh, reselling that property for more money, okay? So by coming to the recorder of deeds, you can get a clearer understanding of what's actually happening on the property. Again, if there were any liens or anything like that, you would be able to see all of that information on these documents, okay? So that takes care of Davidson County. I actually wanna show you one more. Uh, the other day I released a video on how to buy houses using credit cards and we purchased a property for $8,000. So I just wanna show you what that actually looks like. So let's go ahead back to netronline.com and I'm gonna go ahead to Martin County now, which is about three hours away from me. I've never been to the property, never been to Martin County a day in my life, but for $8,000, thought it was a great deal, especially based on what the property is worth after the fact. So I'm gonna go to Martin, and I'm gonna go to Register of Deeds, go to Data Online here, and once I get to Martin County, notice that this is slightly different than what we were looking at on the other websites, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge the disclaimer here. I'm gonna click on full system. Now, once I click on full system, I'm gonna make sure that under name type, I'm gonna go to non-human, and I'm just gonna type in Mill Street. Now, this is generally a property that we're not going to keep long-term. That's why I put it under the company name, but I just wanna show you some of the details of this particular deal. So I'm just gonna click on search, and as you can see, uh, this is the first record that we have in Martin County. In fact, it's the first property that I've purchased in Martin County. And I'm just going to click on Mill Street Properties. I want to select the checkbox to get more info on Mill Street Properties. Then what I want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. And as you can see, the grand tour down here was Levon Williams. Mill Street Properties is the grantee. We're the buyers. I'm going to click on the image just to get more information on that particular property. And... Once you scroll down a little bit, you can see that we purchased this property for $8,000. Now, obviously, this is a basic way of pulling some information to find out what's actually on the property. But again, what I recommend you do is a, use a professional before purchasing any type of property to make sure that you're covered and you won't get bitten later on in the end. All right, so there you have it. You now have a clearer understanding of how to do a preliminary title search yourself. Obviously, you can use this information to conduct a full-blown title search yourself. But again, I personally recommend using a professional title company or attorney to do this for you. I've been investing for just about 20 years, and I still use an attorney or a title company whenever I'm purchasing a property. If I do purchase a property that has some liens on it, which is very rare for me, I'm gonna make sure that I try to get those liens cleared off before the purchase. And the only way to find out if there are any liens or encumbrances on a property is to do a title search. So every property that I'm looking to hold on to long term, if I'm buying and holding or whatever, I'm looking to purchase that property free and clear and make sure that I can ensure that title as well. Another thing you want to keep in mind is if you're using private funds, let's just say to do a fix and flip deal, you want to make sure that you're purchasing this property without the liens, without the encumbrances, because you're using other people's money. Make sure that that title is clear and it's not going to come back to bite you in the long run. Now, if you're doing seller financing or anything like that, if you decide to take on a property and that property has liens or other issues along with that title, just understand that if you ever try to sell that property on the other end, you're going to sell the problems with it. You're going to have to clear that title up in order for the new homeowner to be able to get title insurance on the property. So the moral of the story is use a professional to do this for you and make sure that you always get title insurance on any property that you purchase. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, share this video with all your friends, and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.